I'm Martin Schwager, like lager beer, Schwager, Swiss. Okay, uh, I was in before the war. I was in, I was a reserve officer. I got my commission finally uh, by swearing in front of a notary public because I was a baby when I got my introduction at, at ROTC in UCLA. So uh, I had a commission, and uh, I'll tell you more later on, but uh, I was an ROTC commissioned officer, second lieutenant, on about uh, September the 5th of 1940. Well, I got into it, but I thought, I, you know, all of you, I don't know how you got in, whether you were drafted or volunteer or otherwise, but I had a commission, and I went in because I was going to UC up here at the time. You had to finish your schooling there. And during my tenure there, up at the division, I, uh, hmm, Met a girl who played a harp, <laughs> <laughs> which I moved for seven, 67 days, uh, 67 years, almost. There's some gaps there, but she passed away last December up here at the Kaiser. But uh, dating her, working at Berkeley General and so forth, I thought I'd put in for one year. Well, I had been to Hawaii before. I worked on a matching boat in between the vacation, and I saw the old islands. Beautiful place. Geez, nice. Good, good aroma, flowers, and all that. So uh, we got married down in the Mission in L.A., but we had a three-day pass like anything you get in the Army. But I went back to duty there, and then they said they want some officers for duty in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we gave our quarters up there, uh, but they didn't come in right away. Finally, about May or so, they called me in for a camp show and said, Schwager, your orders are in. No more dependents overseas. <laughs> I shipped out of Fort Mason, but my wife was persistent. She got a cancellation about two weeks later on in Lurleen and joined me over there, but therefore there were no quarters on the base. <laughs> we found a two-bedroom shack or grass shack out at Waikiki, and that's where we were when things happened. <coughs> but uh, we have commute to Fort Shafter, which lies between Honolulu, the city, and uh, uh, Pearl Harbor. So that was home, and we got involved with the community there. She went, took her practice teaching. I uh, was a battery officer, second lieutenant in the 65th, 5th, 64th Coast Artillery Anti-Aircraft. I'd been in the 65th here uh, at the Presidio in Fort Scott, or Fort uh, Barry. So anyway, that started my Army career. So uh, we uh, went routine. We had a prepared position. <coughs> you had to go through Hickam Field, turn left, go on Fort Kamehameha, pass it in about, uh, uh, about a two miles. We had right on the coast. And I'm, uh, my director would be here, and the water would be about where that back wall was. So that was a prepared position, and different batteries had different positions. So we were out there in field training. So, shall I go on? Okay. They called us back on, uh, I guess it was Friday. It was a mo we were a three-inch mobile gun battery. We had powder train fuses. We didn't use a match. Uh, they had a thing to turn. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we went back to Shafter. And that night we had a reception for greeting new officers coming in, those transferring out. The next morning I'm having the men clean up the equipment because we're right by the salt water. And I think we went to a music thing on Saturday night, uh, dinner. And then Sunday morning we're, we had a two-bed in place, which I had shared with Lieutenant Miller, who was from the University of Washington, I bet, previously. So we were having breakfast, uh, sweet rolls, and had the either Salt Lake City Tabernacle or one of the church programs on, and they said, we're being attacked, it's the real McCoy, all defense personnel report to the duty station. Well, we had kids, so my wife sued in, uh, Bob and stuff, and we got my little Studebaker champion, took off for uh, Fort Shafter. We got through town, a lot of confusion. I have a hunch most of the things that blew up, there were fuses that weren't cut pro properly, they were cut probably from the anti-aircraft firing because I don't think the Japanese would waste their bombs on the city itself. But anyway, we made our entrance to Kamea, I mean, Fort Hickam Field at the gate. There were bodies there, people were wa waving us in, past the barracks, going down the road, past the barracks. We could see the initial uh, hangars weren't burning, but further on they were burning. And then we made our right turn, Fort Kamehameha. Yeah, that was when I went and saw the other guy. There was the big red sun. The, the, pl uh, the plane had apparently been hit about an hour or so before because realized we had to put our guns back on the wheels to get them rolling. 
to to our field position. So uh, we passed this Japanese plane up, and it's I, th I think it's two or three GIs who were sitting or standing near the uh, shed there. So by the time we got guns in position, closed in the residence, and uh, uh, got all we didn't have electronics; we had electrical, all the wires and so forth, and oriented. We never fired a shot, and well, you know, the the emphasis it was already nearly over, so we never fired a shot from our gun battery. We have had incidents, but uh, we were there, ready. Official communication saying transport standing off Barbers Point. We prevented <laughs> momentary landings. It never came about. The night was spectacular because of. The water was shallow, and you get little ripples uh, on the sand where the water would run, and you get the reflection from the starlight and so forth. You've got rumors of old gliders and landing, things like that, and you'll see a, a spray of uh, machine gun chases going on. But uh, that was it in Hawaii. So where I stayed, our battery would uh, we'd send token forces, some of the various batteries out to some sand spit in the Pacific to say this is ours. <laughs> this is going to do much good. And then they'd come back burned black from the, s the coral sand reflection. <coughs> and one day, one night, squawker, you're going back stateside. I don't know what, how I got that. So my wife, who had been working with military intelligence, had to find a replacement. But we came back stateside. And I went from beautiful, wonderful Hawaii to the East Coast, Fort Eustis, Virginia. <sighs> what a change of weather. December. <laughs> there was a holding pattern. They assigned me a, to a searchlight battery. You know, they go up at night there. It was just temporarily until they had our pr particular spot in the school down at Camp Davis, Carolina. And there we uh, got information on new equipment and so forth. They got the group together. We're going to Fort Bliss, El Paso, or Fort, where am I? <laughs> I don't remember where I'm going. <coughs> but they kept me for two more weeks of radar training out there on the ocean. Then I joined it. I was now a battery commander where I had a nice van with parabolas on top, clothes, not bed springs for radar, <laughs> and a gun, and a lot of desert training, horse marches, dark nights, and all that. Well, finally, I got, we got our orders to move to, to the east, east someplace. Well, I've been farewell to my wife, who'd also been part of the El Paso Symphony Orchestra, and uh, we headed to the East Coast, Fort Dix, and then landed in Oran, Algeria. Now, there we offloaded, moved the equipment from Oran over to Algiers, and set up air defense around the port of Algiers. Now, remember, this is after the Rommel is over. Uh, that, that part was over. We set up air defense around Algiers. But there was no German Air Force. There may be a reconnaissance at 30,000 feet. So there's no real action. And we were there about a year. And the sister battalion, who went through the same training we did at, uh, at, at uh, Fort Bliss, Bliss, you know, uh, they made the landing at Anzio. So here again, it's all a chance. Where were you going to land? Well, where we landed was uh, Bridges Bardot country. <laughs> there was, <laughs> you know, Bridges Bardot country. <laughs> but we were set up air defenses in uh, Marseille, Port de Bouche, Bouche de Rhone, and then we went over to the Toulon, Toulon, the, uh, the French. Naval base, and there were these big pictures you probably saw in Life magazine before the big French battleships and so <coughs> forth. There were two beaches there, one with a big hole in it, but uh, no activity. So from there on, our last tactical position was uh, at the Nazi marshalling yard. No, still no German Air Force, occasional uh, reconnaissance, but no, no action. So that's where we put our guns away, went up, and went into POW work winding up as operating the Switzerland Leave Center at Mühlhausen, France. Mm -hmm. I was running a travel service that had about, oh, I don't know, 10, ten maps they could choose from. And then every morning, a uh, Swiss uh, representative would come and take that particular group for uh, a week's trip into heaven with chocolate that would melt. They had ration tickets. I think they had $50 <laughs> exchange. They'd had French girls manicure in the hands. They got no change of uniform. I think De Rocha was there, too. But that was the end over there. So that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.